Hey guys, welcome to another quick video from Homesteading Off the Grid. I'm sitting here this morning having my coffee, enjoying my beautiful view, and I'll share it with you here real quick. Love to drink coffee up here in the mornings. We call this our campsite. As you can see, it's just the top section or middle section of the of our top field that we keep mowed down, keep a table and chairs, and put a tent up here when we want to camp. Have a fire pit there. I can stare out across my vast estate, as I refer to it. But it's really just, it's a homestead. It's not a vast estate, but it, it is to me. So, I just want to make a video that's a little different than what we, <clears throat> what we usually make. Um, it's a video about how I got rid of a very annoying neighbor with a crayon. And the reason I'm making this video is uh, because I got a comment yesterday on a video we made about repelling house flies. Uh, Chris W, hello Chris W, give you a shout out here. He said, uh, do you have anything for annoying neighbors? <clears throat> well, I shared this briefly, a little bit of the story with him, and I just thought I'd share it with you folks real quick in case you're going through the similar thing. Um, it's kind of funny. It wasn't funny at the time. We put up with an annoying neighbor for about the first year and a half that we were living on the homestead here. Uh, the quick version of the story is that we bought the property from this guy's very distant relative. And we live out in the country where a lot of folks, and I mean no disrespect by this, but a lot of folks are distantly related to each other. Um, and it was, so it was very distant, but, uh, you know, enough to where the bloodline was still kind of tied together somewhere. But for years, um, this guy had all this land you see, it was his hay field. His, his, third or fourth aunt or whatever used to rent the house out and then he, he would cut the hay and his parents live around here and they let him keep cows on their place and so he got all this free hay. Um, many of the neighbors just let him take their hay and, and that's really cool. That's a win-win, right? Like the barter system, they get free lawn care, he gets free hay. Well, um, when my family and I bought this six acre tract out here in the country, we bought it for us to use for our purposes. Um, I'd spent many years overseas, almost eight years in foreign countries, Iraq, Southern Philippines, Mindanao, and a lot of times I didn't think I was gonna make it home. Uh, I did make it home, and I'm very blessed to have made it home, having gone through some of the stuff I went through, which is, I mean, we're just not gonna talk about it. Um, I mean, there were times I just didn't think I was going to live to see the next day, let alone make it back to the United States. But I did. I was fortunate enough to be able to buy this beautiful piece of land and now live at peace. There's no wars around me. There's no famine. I've got my beautiful bride, our beautiful son, and I'm living happily ever after. Well, so we bought the place. Guy comes along. Hey, I've been getting the hay for a thousand years. I want to keep getting it. And it was all ways tied at the time. I said, okay, um... You can get it the rest of this year. We bought the farm in September. I think there was only like one cut left. I said, but we're going to use the land for our own purposes going forward. That's why we bought it. I mean, if I didn't want to have all this land, I would have bought a house in town and not had to worry about it. <clears throat> but go ahead and get it, you know, this last time. I appreciate you taking it off for us so I don't have to have it bush hog. Well, the guy didn't like that. He let me know that he had been getting this hay for a thousand years and he was going to get it for another thousand years. And by God, the house is mine, but the hay was his. And it was like a bully, right? And this guy's like maybe 60, big guy, mostly, I mean, obese. He's not like, you know, muscular or anything. And I just, uh, I mean, I was offended, as you might be. I mean, number one, it's mine. I bought it. And my name's on the deed. Um, number two, I didn't go where I went and do what I did so people like that could have the freedom to, 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 to act that way to somebody who just bought a piece of property, especially somebody who had done what I'd done, went where I'd, I'd gone and did what I did. But basically, I come back to my country after years of, of just... <laughs> you know, being over in those places, and some guy that lives down the road is telling me he's going to take, you know, I can't use my land I just bought for the purposes I want, whatever, I'm getting derailed here. So, I, and he even, he, he went as far as to say, you can even put up a gate and that won't keep me out. Well, 
I did put up a gate and I put up some posts and their trespassing signs because I wanted to take not necessarily the path of least resistance but the path that would result in less conflict. I'm, I'm finished with conflict folks. I've fought in a war and I've been in places that uh, you know on paper it's supposedly not a war but things are going on that people especially in the West have no clue about and which we can't even talk about. I mean some of us. So but uh, so I, I, I'm just finished with conflict. I don't, I'm done fighting. I don't want to fight anymore. Um, I want to grow my green beans and corn and have my chickens and watch my son play in the field and uh, stare at my beautiful bride, the most beautiful woman I've ever been blessed uh, with spending time with. So I put up the gate, put up the posted sign. And this guy has his tractor. He goes around cutting all the hay. So we even started planting our tree lines, which we wanted to do anyway, to build privacy screens around the, the road frontage and all this. Well, um, it didn't work. I mean, uh, we never really shut the gate at first, and if he saw us out, he'd come in, he'd give me lectures. Like uh, that fall, the lecture would be about how I better not be hunting deer on my property, better not be shooting no deer out here. Folks, uh, I'm within my rights to kill deer on my property, as you know, and if it's hunting season in the state of Virginia, I don't even need a license as long as it's in hunting season, and if I kill a deer, I turn it in. Um, and I could get a damage permit, which I've been putting off and I need to do, but I could kill unlimitless, I mean limitless deer out here. There's so many. Um, but the point is, here he is again telling me what I can and can't do on my property. So we start actually shutting the gate. and. Um, Oh, he would wait on us when our kid would get off the school bus because his parents live across the road. The school, it was so creepy. The school bus would pull in, sh the bus would stop. You know, it's right on his parents' driveways on the opposite side of ours. So there's nobody there. We're waiting on the bus. Bus stops. Kid gets off. Bus pulls out, and there he is sitting in his car with a lecture. I mean, guys, this guy was the epitome of an annoying neighbor. And um, the whole time, the, the big offense to me is... Who does this guy, I mean, I'm a former airborne infantryman who went into really nasty places and did things that would give this guy nightmares, and he's getting in my face talking to me like this. It was a challenge because uh, I have some anger issues. They're repressed. But, I mean, a lot of you folks out there are veterans, and you've served, and you've been in war. And, you know, we're probably the last people to behave like this with. But this guy was so um, just, I mean, I don't want to insult him. He was being very inappropriate. So it came to a head when we found a dog, okay? We were out for what we call a joy ride. We like to take joy rides out in the country, especially in the fall when the leaves change colors. And my wife's from the Philippines. My son was born in the Philippines. They had never seen a deciduous forest until we got here. Everything was tropical. And they were just so amazed when they saw all these beautiful green trees become beautiful yellow, red, purple, orange trees. And so in the fall, we go around, we do these things. We found a dog. We found a little puppy out on this this old country road, and it was like a little um, blue tick, and it was maybe three months old. No, we weren't going to leave it, so we brought it home, and we never really had any intentions of keeping it long term, but we wanted to find a good home for it. Now we didn't advertise it on Craigslist as a as a found dog because in our area there are a lot of bear hunters. You can see them running up and down the road. They have their kennels, and I just had the feeling that if I put out there, hey, we found this little blue tick puppy, somebody would take that as, oh, look, free blue tick, another free, you know, free bear dog, and they might come by and say, oh, yeah, that's ours, we lost it. No, I wanted to do what was best for this dog. So we kept it for almost two months, and we fed it, we nurtured it back to health uh, before we, then the time came around that we were, we finally put an ad on Craigslist talking about it, how we found it. We wanted to find it a good home, and, and just to fast forward, we found it a wonderful home. Uh, a lady came and got it who wanted a dog for her 12-year-old son, and they keep the dog inside. They have a nice home, uh, so it's an inside and outside dog, but it's going to be inside when it's cold in the winter. It's going to be inside when it's hot in the summer, so it's going to be treated very humanely, which is something that's important to us. And, uh, you know, when you do the kind of things I did, a lot of veterans will understand this. You learn to respect life more when you 
I think, uh, and uh, no disrespect to people who haven't served, but a lot of folks take so many things about life for granted. But when you're in a situation where you could lose yours at any given moment on any given day, and those around you are, it just makes you view all life differently. Um, that's, well, whatever. I got sidetracked again. So that dog meant something to me. You've probably seen some of our videos. I saved fish when they flood out of our pond. Yesterday I found some skink eggs. I made sure to very gingerly put them back in their nest. I mean, it's just, it's different. I might not have done those things 10 years ago before I was in those places doing those things, but it just all means something more to me now. So anyway, back to this guy. While we had this dog, we didn't keep it tied up, we didn't keep it pinned up, and it never left our property. It went wherever we went, and when we would leave to go somewhere, it would sit on the porch and wait for us until we got back. Well, we came home one day, a couple weeks after we got the dog, and uh, the dog was shut up in our garage. We have an, an external detached garage. Of course, it's external, but a detached garage. The dog was shut up. So we have some wonderful neighbors, <clears throat> the only neighbors you can see from our house, and that's even only when the leaves are off in the winter. And I asked this guy, did you shut our dog up? Was he on your property? And he said, no, uh, not at all. Um, so we see the other neighbor again, the annoying neighbor. We'll call him Mr. J, just for purposes. And his name doesn't start with a J. So I don't want to embarrass this guy. Some of the people I know around here watch our videos, and I don't want to embarrass this guy. But uh, so we're down at the bus stop the next day. There's his parents' driveway on the other side. Bus pulls in, kids gets, kid gets off, our son gets off. Bus pulls away, and there's Mr. J. Lecture time. Now he's lecturing us about our dog, uh, leash laws, which he was right. There are leash laws in our county, and we're technically supposed to keep the dog lot tied up or something. Um, just lecture, lecture, lecture. You know, something else he used to do. I'll tell you this real quick, too. Down where we have our tree line, um, I weedied the ditch line on the state's right away with the road. Uh, to keep it, I mean, I want it to look presentable. I have a, I'm very proud of our property, and I, when people drive by, I want it to look good, right? Um, well, if if I would go for maybe a week or so without weed eating it once it got tall enough uh, to where it should be, but I just hadn't gotten around to it, he would take his bush hog and go down the road and push it down in our ditch line and just scour the earth all the way down. It's like 300 yards and dig this trench into the land. And then, of course, the next lecture would be, that's the state's right away. Now you can't do nothing about that because you don't own that. I mean, that's how big of a jerk this guy was being. So anyway, bus pulls away. There he is. He's lecturing us about the dog. Uh, now, by this time, we had already put on our ad on Craigslist to get rid of the dog. Uh, the woman was coming, so I told my wife, I said, honey, I know how to get rid of this guy once and for all. And this was about a year ago, and this worked. We've not had to deal with this guy for almost a year now. She said, how? And I said, you know, the biggest fear among all human beings is the fear of the unknown. Uh, she's like, what do you mean? And, and I kind of, you know, to, I use the example, like when I was in Iraq, when I was in the Philippines, you knew you could be killed on any given day. You just knew it was a reality. That wasn't the biggest fear. The biggest fear was not knowing when that might be. I mean, you know, the silence, the calm became eerie because, okay, what's going on here? Uh, oh, man, I'm not supposed to talk about this stuff. Sorry, I keep derailing in the wrong direction. Oh, I had a coffee. So anyway, here's what I did with my crayon and a piece of paper. The woman came to get the dog. She got the dog, and uh, I, I told my wife, we're not going to tell this guy we got rid of the dog. Because what he would do, you know, the dog was shut up in the garage. This went on for a couple, couple of weeks. Um, we'd leave. We'd go somewhere. We'd come home. The dog was shut up in the garage. We knew who was coming on the property to shut the dog up in the garage. Uh, and I had a feeling for some time that this guy, every time we were gone, he'd come on our property and just snoop around to see what we were doing. And we've been raising rabbits, chickens, we've had gardens. I think he's just walking around, seeing what we're up to. I don't think he ever stole anything. I don't think he ever damaged anything. I think he was just being nosy, and he felt entitled. And I cannot stand people with a sense of entitlement. I worked for everything I have. You should work for everything you have. I mean, that's just a personal belief of mine. I'm, I'm not trying to sound mean. That's just how I feel. So anyway, what I did is I took my paper, I took my crayon, and I wrote a big note. I, it said, smile, Mr. J. You're on CCTV again. 
and we didn't have any closed caption cameras on our property at all, nowhere. So I taped this sign on the garage door where he always came and put the dog. And so this was the day after we got rid of the dog. So we left and we saw his car up at his mother's house. And uh, I mean, this guy's a big winner, right? He bragged to us when we first met him about how he duped the state into believing he got hurt on the job. So he's been able to just get a disability check for the last 20 years and not have to work. And, you know, gets free cow space from his parents, free hay from the neighbors. I mean, just take, take advantage, take advantage, take advantage, entitlement, entitlement, entitlement. And uh, it's terrible. I said I wasn't going to insult the guy. I guess I just did. So we go into town, and we come back, and we never. This guy, we've seen him, of course, because he lives four miles up the road. Yeah, he, he's four miles away, and this is how you know much he was, how crazy it is. He was getting into our business, but since that day, he hasn't looked at us. It's been a year, and. My wife laughs. <clears throat> we'll see him go by and we laugh. We know he saw the sign. And she kind of, I mean, she's from a culture that's a little bit different than ours. I mean, there, they'll tell you, hey, well, first of all, people don't go on other people's lands unless they're invited because they'll know they'll get shot or macheted. And uh, if they do, they typically don't get a warning. You know, it's not like in our culture where, I mean, maybe a hundred years ago uh, that was the case. But now, I mean, it's different. So um, she asked me why did that work so good, and I told her, and this is I honestly believe this, I mean, who knows what he's been doing up here, and it might as, might have been as something as simple and as innocent as, you know, maybe he pulls up in our driveway, he's looking around, and maybe he's got to take a leak, and maybe he's just relieving himself right in the middle of our driveway or on the side of one of our trees or something. Something as simple as that, uh, that he thinks we actually might have on tape that he's so embarrassed by or maybe it's just him knowing he's not he knows he's not supposed to do this so it's just a simple fact of knowing that we know that it, what he's been doing and he got caught he got busted and then of course it's the compounded fear of we now have evidence and what if we take this to somebody and say hey do something about this guy so that's kind of the long version this was supposed to be the short version but that was that's the full story of our experience with a very annoying neighbor that we dealt with for a year and a half. I didn't want to have a legal battle with somebody four miles up the road from me. I didn't want everybody out here in our part of the county, oh, that's the guy who's such a jerk. If you say hi, he's going to go get a restraining order or a no trespass order from the county deputy sheriffs or whatever. Now, I wanted to take the path that had the less the least amount of conflict involved because I'm finished with conflict. I've been in conflict in the Middle East, Southeast Asia. I don't want to be in conflict out here on my homestead, okay? So sometimes with just a crayon and a piece of paper, you can take care of an annoying neighbor and get rid of them once and for all, like we did ours. So I apologize for any parts of this story that sounded negative. I'm a positive guy. I love people. Uh, I love talking to people, all kinds of people. Um, but, you know, I respect you. I expect you to respect me also. Just if you cross the line, I'll pull out my crayon. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, Homesteading Off the Grid. And we'll see you next time. And I'll give you a parting shot of the sun breaking up over the tops of the trees here on the homestead.